find the payment necessary to amortize a 4% loan of $2,600 compounded quarterly with seven quarterly payments. Calculate the total payments and the total amount of interest paid. Now, as I've indicated by having the formula here, if this is a present value problem. Anytime you're dealing with loan payments, you're going to be using present value formula. So the real thrust of the problem is deciding what each letter is and uh, doing the calculation. So let's get started. The present value is the amount of the loan. Whenever you're doing loan problems, the present value is always the loan amount. That's $2,600. Periodic payment is what we're looking for. Find the payment. So we're going to be looking for capital R. The time. Now this is a little tricky, but you just have to think about it. They didn't actually tell us the time. They said in years. They told us it was seven quarters, but there are four quarters in a year. That leaves three more quarters after that. So it's really one and three quarters years. Which if you change it to improper fraction is seven fourths of a year really don't need that quantity in this particular case. I'll show you why in a minute, but it's not too bad to calculate even if you didn't realize you didn't need it. The annual interest rate, little r, is a 4% loan. So if you write that as a decimal, 0.04. M is the number of compounding periods per year. You're doing it quarterly, so that would be four times a year. Little i, is little r over m, so that'd be 0 0.04 divided by 4. You can probably do that in your head. If not, you can do it on the calculator. You get 0 0.01. And little n, this is why I said you didn't need this to start with. If you take m, which is 4, and multiply it by t, which is 7 fourths, the 4 is canceling, you just get 7. So what we've just discovered, even if it's belatedly, is that they gave us n to start with. So we really didn't need uh, T. We needed M for another reason to calculate little i, but we didn't really even need T because they gave us N directly. If you didn't notice that, you can still get by. It'll show up later. But N was what they actually gave you in the original uh, statement of the problem. Now it's simply a matter of plugging in the numbers and chugging away. So you've got 2600 for the present value. We're looking for capital R. 1 minus the quantity 1 plus little i point one raised to the negative n power n is seven and then that is divided by little i so twenty six hundred equals capital R times now let's use the calculator let's clear off the previous number we've got one plus zero Point zero one, which I can do in my head, but if not, use your calculator to find that as well. Is 1.01. .01. That number gets raised to the negative seven power. You cannot raise, uh, you can't type in a negative number directly, but when you hit power, you can put in the positive value, which is a seven, and there's a key with a plus minus on it, and that changes the sign. The plus minus key changes the sign. So if you want to put in a negative, enter the positive value, and then hit plus minus. That throws the negative in. Now you've got the negative in the exponent, so you're ready to hit equal. That quantity is the base raised to the power, but notice this quantity should be negative. So that's another perfect time to use the plus minus key. Notice that it becomes negative. And the only thing missing in the numerator is the plus one. So you just add one and hit equal. That's the entire numerator. Now divide it by 0 0.01. Divide it by 0 0.01 equals. So that quantity is um, 6.72819454. And again, take lots more decimal places than you think you're going to need, especially or if you're going to uh, take the number out of the calculator and put it back in. Now, let's make some more room to finish this off. I want to solve for R, so I need to divide both sides by this quantity 6.728 and on and on. So, uh, capital R is actually. 2600 divided by 
4529. Now there are several ways you might do this, but given the fact that this um, denominator is already in the calculator, I have a favorite way. One way you could do it is just clear it out and start over, but that means you have to type it back in. Uh, two problems with that, it takes longer and you really need to make sure you've taken enough decimal places. So I don't like to do that. Uh, a second alternative is to use the memory key. You can use the memory key to store that number and bring it back when you need it. That would be my second favorite way to do it. But there is another trick. Even though I want to say numerator divided by denominator, I already have the denominator in there. It is possible to pull off a trick and that is divide it backwards upside down of what I really want. So if I divide the denominator by the numerator, 2600, and hit equal, that's certainly not what I wanted. I didn't want to divide the denominator by the numerator. I wanted to buy the, divide the numerator by the denominator. But there's a button that'll, that will correct that. There's a button called 1 over x, and on this calculator, it is the shift key above the key to the left of the power uh, key. It's right here. So if I hit shift 1 over x, it flips the fraction back the way it should be, and I get $386.43. That's my favorite way to do it. If you want to try some of these other ways, do it, but practice it and make sure that uh, you don't make any careless mistakes. So $386.44 is the quarterly payment that they ask us to find. But they also ask us two other questions. In addition to that, they also ask us to find the total payments. Well, that's pretty simple if you just think about what they, what they are asking you. The total payments are nothing more than how much you paid in. Well, I just calculated that I was paying $386.43 every quarter, so if I paid $386.43 each quarter, and I did it for a total of seven quarters, then the product of those two numbers would be what I'm looking for. So the total payments if you do that on the calculator, it comes out to be, um, here's another little uh, hint, another little trick that you better be careful of. If you leave that number in the calculator and start to multiply it by seven, you could be off by pennies because you have to let reality intrude in your world when you're doing these things. In reality, you wouldn't pay somebody $386.4335356. You would round it off the nearest cent and actually pay them uh, $386.43 just like I've written right here. So if you times this number by 7 instead of the number I wrote down by 7 you might very well be off in the uh, at least in the cents um, digit. So word of warning when you're actually making payments that payment would not be made with that many decimal places it would be made to the nearest cent so you do not need to leave that number in the calculator while you before you multiply it by seven. So if you're going to do this, clear it out, put in three hundred and eighty six dollars and forty three cents and then multiply it by seven. And that will give you the answer that you're expected to get, which is twenty seven hundred and five dollars and one cent. If you had not rounded off before you multiplied, you probably would have gotten something other than one cent. And even though theoretically if you paid in partial fractions of a cent, that would be right. In the real world, you do not do that. You would actually pay the payment to the nearest cent, and this would be the right answer, not what you would have gotten had you not rounded off before you multiplied by seven. Just think about that. Okay, finally they asked one more question they wanted to for us to calculate the total interest paid. So the total interest again is simple to figure. It's just how much you paid in minus what you borrowed. So the total interest is what you paid in that's 270501 minus the amount we borrowed which was $2600. $2600. and if you punch that out on the calculator or probably can just do it in your head you'll get hundred and five dollars and one cent so the total interest paid for that entire loan 
would be $105.01. So there are lots of little things that you've got to deal with, and this problem illustrates several of them. One of them is dealing with entering a negative exponent. One of them is figuring out how to divide this where the uh, nasty looking decimal value is already in the display, a quick way to do that by using the uh, reciprocal key, the 1 over x key. The fact that once you get this uh, total payment, I mean the uh, quarterly payment, in order to get a total payment you need to round those that value off to dollars and cents instead of just using the unrounded number before you multiply it by how many times you paid it. Because in reality you would be paying this amount, not the unrounded amount. So lots of little things this problem teaches you.